Can you talk a little bit, uh, maybe Nikita, maybe you can talk a little bit about this idea of a zero trust approach and and how Cohesity thinks about immutability and and uh, and kind of the broader security posture. You may have heard this term being thrown around a lot, uh, zero trust, uh, with a lot of uh, our competitors even saying they go like they are the founders of zero trust, which is just ridiculous. Uh, this this is something that a lot of customers have uh, you know decided that they want to make sure that all of their data is secure and has many layers of security because let's face it as your defenses get better so do the uh, bad actors anything that you do that you think is going to protect your data there's always a way that they get around so the best approach that companies are taking is to ensure that they uh, apply a zero trust policy where there is no uh, person or uh, entity, whether it's internal or external, who can access the data without going through all of the security uh, measures as well as multi-factor authentication, uh, access control, um, the, the KMS or the key management system, the encryption, and so on. Now, Cohesity has uh, a zero trust policy as well we uh, comply with the nist guidelines um set by the cybersecurity uh, agencies and to know more about the technical details of uh you know how we comply with the nist protocols uh please visit our website um you know there's multi um layered approach that we take uh for the uh access layer, for the application layer, um, and even for the peripheral security. So that's how I'd like to summarize that. Brock, uh, is there anything that you would like to add to that? Yeah, just um, going back to the going back to the reporting and, and you know, I think a lot of people struggle as, as, as you have more and more accounts, you know, inside of AWS and, and a lot of the enterprise customers I work with have a, have a large number of AWS accounts. Um, and so it can become you know, rather cumbersome to try to, you know, log into each account to understand, you know, exactly, you know, what you're protecting and, and what you're not protecting. Um, and so I think Cohesity really is able to simplify that by once, you know, once you've registered those accounts with the service, we can select all those at the same exact time. We can perform reporting on those so that with just a few clicks, you're able to understand what you are and are not, uh, you know, backing up. So I think that's, that's super helpful. And then Nikita, I would agree with everything that um, that you mentioned as well. Brock, I, I want you to um, feel this one. The ability to ingest EC2 backups as well as manage snapshots. Can you just talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. So um, the way the way that Cohesity uh, Cloud Services works is, you know, at the policy level, you are able to select both an AWS snapshot and a Cohesity snapshot. So. A lot of our customers want to keep, you know, maybe one or two snapshots around in the account. Um, since they're sitting in the account, you can recover from those, you know, super quickly. Uh, but the problem is, is they're not really protected from any sort of, you know, bad actor. They're not, you're not protected from, you know, ransomware and, and things like that since it is sitting right there in the production account. So it might make sense to keep a, a snapshot or two there. Uh, but whenever Cohesity ingests this data, we do dedupe and compress it. Uh, as well as perform anomaly detection. And so we're really able to get that more traditional, you know, backup level compression of, you know, three to five X, where if you're just, you know, taking the native snapshots inside of your AWS account, those are incremental, uh, but AWS does not dedupe or compress them. Uh, and so what might happen is over time, you you end up with a, a, a large amount of EBS snapshots and, and therefore a, a large amount of cost. Um, so we can actually change that approach a little bit. We can help out with the security side by air gapping the data uh, into the Cohesity platform. You know, you've got a completely, you know, separate interface there. You have a lot more control to where you could have specific administrators logging into that and, and other administrators logging into um, to AWS. So there's a lot of access control uh, positives as well. Um, but then to kind of round things off, we are providing the ability to have some cost savings there with that dedupe and, co and compress where, you know, maybe it takes up a, a, a few terabytes um, inside of your AWS account. But once it comes into Cohesity, we can really see, you know, typically around three to five X reduction um, in that. And, and we're able to save costs and, and also provide a better security uh, standpoint for the customer. 
And I'd also like to add, um, you know, the egress costs, which a Cohesity Data Protect as a service does not pass on to the customer. So as opposed to say having AWS native backup where they get charged, where you get charged every time that you recover data back, uh, that doesn't apply in Cohesity Data Protect as a service because we uh, kind of cover for those egress costs. Yeah, not a small point, actually. Uh, egress costs have become uh, uh, quite a talking point uh, that we hear over and over as well. Um, so yeah, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna skip over that too much. Um, well done. Thanks very much, uh, and best of luck for the rest of the year. Thank, Thank you. So much, Appreciate it. If your business would like to be featured in a future event, contact us today.